quite frankly, it's just in our community. And I, said, I know people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are, we are terrified. Because you don't know, you have no idea. You have no idea how that cop that day left the house. You don't know if he walked on the good side of the bed. You don't know if he walked walk on, on the wrong side of the bed. You don't know if he had an argument at home with a significant other. You know, if one of his kids said something crazy to him and he left the house steaming. Or maybe he just left the house saying that today is going to be the end for one of these black people. That's what it feels like. Now, when it comes to basketball, LeBron James is brilliant. When it comes to matters of police and their relationship with the black community, the man is clueless, but he claims he speaks from an educated mind. I speak from a very educated mind. Um, so um, I'm kind of the wrong guy to actually go at because I do my homework. Now, of course, it doesn't help when kerosene Maxine throws, well, kerosene on the issue. Uh, but the police, I think really believe, and in some ways are led to believe, that their greatest challenge and their greatest chore is to keep, uh, you know, black people in their place. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Well, as you know, remarks like that contribute to what is called the Ferguson effect. Crime goes up. It also contributes to the disrespect, the growing disrespect that people have for cops. Consider what this gentleman did to this NYPD detective in broad daylight. New tonight, a brazen attack on an NYPD detective. It was caught on camera. Video here showing a man walk up to the de detective and then hit him in the head with a stick. This happened just before noon today while the detective investigated a burglary on Prince Street in Flushing, Queens. And attacks like that are causing a lot of cops around the country to go, wait a second, I put in my 20. I haven't been sued, shot, or divorced. Maybe I'll just say to hell with it. All right, rising crime rates and anti-cop sentiment taking its toll in New York City and the police overall. New data shows that more than 5,300 NYPD officers either retired or announced plans to leave the department last year, a staggering 75% increase over 2019. Delphia police are having trouble finding new recruits to join the force, even as officials say the department is severely understaffed. Action News reporter Walter Perez joins us with a closer look at what's causing the shortage, Walter. Well, Rick and Christy, it's a big issue that, at least on the surface, looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. Local FOP President John McNesby says it's kind of like a perfect storm developing. The eye of the storm revolving around several issues, including a dramatic rise in the number of Philadelphia police officers filing for retirement, a diminishing pool of young people who even want to be a big city cop, and the suspension of new officer training because of the pandemic. Do you remember that horrific attack when five Dallas cops were killed execution style? And the Dallas police chief said, hey, be part of the solution. We're hiring. Join us. I'm the kind of person that I, I probably wouldn't protest or complain. I'd get involved and do something about it by becoming part of the solution. And that's still in me. That keeps me going. That I get so much satisfaction that I can do a small thing to help uh, this community. Uh, I, I just love Dallas. And I love serving. It's, it's part of my character. It's part of who I am. I get all the, all the crap we got to take as police officers. The, the satisfaction you get with serving, much more gratifying. Much more gratifying. And it's like that for a lot of police officers in, in this country. And what, what advice would you give to young black men today to overcome their fear? Become a part of the solution. Serve your communities. Don't be a part of the problem. We're hiring. We're hiring. Uh, get off that protest line and, and, and put an application in. And we'll put you in your neighborhood and we will help you resolve some of the problems you're protesting about. And as far as Mr. James is concerned, just how much credibility does he have? After all, you remember his allegation that he was a victim of a hate crime? 
The L.A. home of basketball star LeBron James was vandalized overnight. Now, police say it was a hate crime. KCON Live's Dave Lopez live in Brentwood. He's got new details on that investigation. Dave, what's going on? Well, Sandra, we're on uh, Rockingham Drive. If that sounds familiar, uh, that's where O.J. lived. But uh, we're in the uh, South Rockingham. North Rockingham is where O.J. lived across Sunset. But behind me is the... Uh, I guess you would call it the summer home of uh, LeBron James. Very few people even knew that he had a home here. He paid $20 million for this a few years ago. It's just under 10,000 square feet. And what you're looking at is the gate to the entryway. And that is the gate that we are told that was uh, vandalized, if you will. It was spray painted with the N-word. Uh, we are told that it was uh, quite large and it almost went the extension of the gate. Uh, the man who was in charge of keeping security here for Mr. Mr. Uh, LeBron James uh, painted over it before police even got here before 7 o'clock this morning, but he took a picture. So police arrived. There was no damage whatsoever, and he said, here's the photo of what I painted over. And uh, that will probably become part of a public record, but not until tomorrow. Uh, we, can all, we can just tell you, because of what the police told us, that it is the N-word, and because of that, it is a hate crime. I think the case has been closed.